Hello and welcome to the Third Line Mountain Studio video tutorial. Today we'll be continuing learning about Impulse, one of the drum machines within Ableton Live, and specifically how to trigger and record with the sounds inside the drum machine using the computer keyboard and the MIDI piano keyboard, such as the one we have in the studio. Then we'll have a look at using Impulse to edit and fine tune our beat samples so that we can make them our own. I'm starting today using the same Ableton Live session we were using last time. And I've got my Impulse machine here. So last time I was just pressing on these buttons with the mouse to hear them. Now this time I want to do that with the computer keyboard. So I'm just going to press this button here. It goes red and that means that I can use any one of these ASDF keys on my computer keyboard to trigger them like so. Right, so if I put on the metronome, press play, I can kind of play along. Just press stop. So sometimes it's a bit hard to get it exactly on the beat and in time because your computer might be a bit slow or you might just be a bit uncoordinated, but either way it's all right because we've got a few tricks to smooth those timing mistakes out later on. So first things first, let's create a clip to play into. I'm just going to double click like last time. And if I just click on that and press Apple R or Control R, I can rename it so I don't get lost. Now when I press play, this clip is now ready to be played into with the computer keyboard. So let's play along. Notice it just keeps looping and you can keep entering beats over the ones you've already entered. So I've got a few timing issues here. Things aren't exactly where I want them, but all I need to do to smooth this out is use a tool called quantization. So I just have to select all of these beats here and I do that by pressing Control A on a PC or Apple A on a Mac. And then you can control click or right click to bring up this menu here. And then you can press quantize. Now let's have a listen to that. It's not exactly what I want. I might delete something here, move something there. Just like drawing in a beat, after you've played in a beat, you can move things around to make it sound better. Now, you might not want to correct your timing 100%. See how now everything is totally on the bar, on the beats in the bar? You might want to have a little bit more chaos. So let's make another beat, beat two, and let's try something like that. All right, so this time before I quantize, I'm going to go to quantize settings and I'm just going to take that default amount down from 100 to let's say 75 and let's see what happens now. See how things aren't exactly on the lines there? They're not exactly on the beats. Now that maintains a level of inaccuracy if you like that can give your beat a bit more of a natural feel or a less machine like feel. So let's try recording something in using the MIDI piano keyboard. I have attached to my computer a two octave MIDI keyboard and when using impulse the beats always appear here in the center octave. 
Other drum machines might have them default down in the bottom octave, but on impulse, you're always going to be looking around the center of your keyboard to find them. So let's double click to make a clip and record it in. Okay, so I'm just going to control click, right click and press quantize. One thing that you will find is that when you record in with a piano keyboard, you might have recorded in velocity also. And that basically means that the computer records in how hard you pressed the key as well as what key you pressed. And it's shown here in the size of these stems below the beat. When you record with the computer keyboard, it doesn't record how hard you hit the beats, whereas most MIDI keyboards these days tell your computer the velocity, that is how hard you hit the beat as well. That's alright at the moment, but sometimes you might find that you'll get really pale and soft beats like this one and then really loud ones next to that. So you might want to smooth that out by just adjusting these stems here below so they're roughly in the same height and that means they'll be the same loudness. Now we're going to learn how to use the controls on Impulse to change and fine tune our drum samples. So if I just double click here on Impulse so we get back to our drum machine. Now this is a perfect opportunity to use the computer keyboard or the MIDI piano keyboard because with one hand we can trigger the sounds and with the other we can make adjustments to them as we hear the sounds and as we think is necessary. So I've just had a little play there, changing the sounds a bit using what's available to me within the Impulse machine. And we can hear the difference now. Turn the metronome off. So the sound is suddenly quite different and that's only from adjusting a few little things there. So the impulse controls are worth some experimenting with, particularly if you want to make the beats more unique or if you have something quite specific in mind. Okay, then let's learn about what these controls actually do. Basically, whenever you click on kick, all of these controls here can change the kick sound. And when you click on the next sample, in this case snare, the same controls exist again for the snare, and so on. These three down the side are global, meaning they control all of these things at once, and we'll have a listen to that later. So starting with the kick, Start will take the beginning of your sample and make it shorter. And transpose basically means pitch, so this will make it higher and lower. And stretch will make it longer or shorter. by actually expanding the whole file as opposed to just chopping the beginning off it like the start button did. Drive is a kind of a distortion. And filter can change the tone of your sound. So 
So if you turn the resonance up and go to, say, a bandpass filter, you can hear that sweep. And decay is something that's handy to keep right up there. It basically will chop the end of your sample off. So if you've chosen a long sample, it's probably for a reason. So a good idea is to keep that high. Pan is stereo image. Works well on headphones. It's good to keep in the center for something like a kick. And volume will basically allow you to give a little submix to your drum machine. So you might want the kick a bit louder. And in this case, the snare a bit softer. Let's have a listen to the global controls now. Press spacebar for play. So volume will control the whole volume of the whole drum kit. And time will stretch or compress. Transpose is a pitch shifter for the whole machine. So that can be quite fun. Now that's it for Impulse. Next tutorial we'll have a look at drum rack and we'll be able to review a lot of what we've learned here particularly in how to draw in and play in beats.